The abandoned city of Pripyat is one of the most mysterious places on our planet. The town is located in the Chernobyl exclusion zone on the Pripyat River, two kilometers from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Pripyat city has become a tourist calling card of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. It attracts tourists from many countries around the world. With the onset of spring, the flow of tourists to the Chernobyl exclusion zone increases many times over. The calling card of Pripyat is the amusement park, home to the legendary Ferris wheel, carousel, children's driving range, and swings. The official opening of the amusement park was scheduled for May 1, 1986. However, just five days before, it was due to be launched, an accident occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The frozen Ferris will became a sad and tragic symbol not only of Pripyat, but of the entire exclusion zone. It was amazing. I had a super fun time. We started the morning in Kiev, two hours to get here, and everything was just perfect. So if you want to feel some real Soviet Union feeling, and if you want to, you know, feel everything here about the, I don't even know the English word for it, the wheel, and everything that's abandoned, you just gotta come here and enjoy this tour because those are the guys. And I highly recommend you to do it. Pripyat city consists of five micro districts. This town was built according to the then unique principle of triangular building. Pripyat was considered the most advanced settlement in the west of the former Soviet Union. In 1972, one house was put into operation every month. In the center of Pripyat, there was a cultural center, the Palace of Culture, Energetic, next to it the hotel, Polsey, and a restaurant. The Hotel Polsey in the center of Pripyat was built for tourists and city guests. During the liquidation of the consequences of the accident, liquidators lived there. More than a hundred multi-story residential buildings, 15 kindergartens, five schools, a palace of culture, a cinema, swimming pools, and sports halls, stadiums, a park, Dozens of playgrounds, a yacht club were built in Pripyat. Today, the town of Pripyat has become an open-air museum of the former Soviet era. The city is gradually being swallowed up by nature and time and radiation are destroying the architecture. Almost all of the city's abandoned buildings are in a state of disrepair. Some of these buildings have partially collapsed. Due to the constant fluctuations in temperature and humidity, the wooden elements of the buildings are rotten and may at any moment collapse under the feet of tourists. For 35 years, after the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the radiation situation in the city of Pripyat has improved significantly. 
the level of radiation exposure has decreased several times. And yet, there are radioactive contaminated sites in the city where radiation levels remain very high. One of these places is the river port of Pripyat. This is one of the lowest places in Pripyat, where all the radioactive dirt flowed down. Trees and leaves, they are like natural accumulators, collecting radioactive dust. If we take a dosimeter now, and look at its reading, at a norm of 0.3, it shows about 2. But, if we measure radiation levels, just a few steps away, and that's right here. We're looking at about 40 micro sieverts per hour. Does that mean this value has to be multiplied by a hundred? Yes, yes, right. At this point, we can see the peak limit, which is 150 times the human norm. This is what the Geiger counter is showing us now. These numbers speak for themselves. Another dangerous and very contaminated place in Pripyat is medical unit number 126. It is a place of fear and dread for many people. After the accident at the fourth reactor of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the first victims were brought here. They were firefighters. Many people vomited profusely and received huge doses of radiation. In the emergency room, the injured firefighters were stripped of their clothes and wrapped in white sheets. Radiation levels increased dramatically throughout the hospital, and the clothes of the firefighters were highly contaminated. Even 35 years after the accident, there are still helmets and firemen's clothing in the hospital premises. Today, radiation levels are very high in many rooms. Remains of medical equipment, faded medical journals, abandoned flasks, and test tubes, rusty old beds on springs. The scattered items instill fear and dread in the tourists. There is a dim light, peeling paint on the walls, the smell of damp and decay. And worst of all, there are high levels of radiation that you don't immediately see or feel. On the periphery of Pripyat is another radioactive site, the site of a special engineering service. The device 
shows where nine and where six. But inside, the difference is much greater. 227, 380. Can you see the testimony? That means it's a lot. Not here 250, 260 are within the margin of error. You need to multiply the readings by 100. This grab bucket was used at the time of the accident on the roofs of Units 3 and 4 to clean up the disaster. This bucket was used to remove pieces of radioactive fuel from the roofs of the units and also to throw into the reactor whatever was needed to fight the fire. In terms of gamma radiation, as you have just seen, this bucket has a dose rate of 250 to 260 microsieverts per hour, with a norm of 0.3. For beta radiation, the surface radiation is less, in the range of 50,000. At the norm 100, for the Chernobyl zone, and 20 for Ukraine. You won't get your annual dose in 5 minutes, but, in 15 minutes, it's possible. Oh, it's cracking. Does it say 70,000? One in a hundred. It is a rough estimate, but a valid one. Different factors and ratios have to be taken into account. But roughly one in a hundred. This is where the equipment lies. These elevators were used to transport robots to the roof of the emergency unit. They would be lifted by crane or helicopter, and then the robot would move off. And over there, there are different parts of these robots, crawlers, and everything else. Green moss and ginger moss, as well, is the Earth's filter. Moss accumulates a lot of radiation. It accumulates both gamma, beta, and alpha. Therefore, in Pripyat and in the Chernobyl zone, you should not step on moss. It is bad for your health. It's a very radioactive place in Chernobyl, in terms of beta contamination. What's in those containers? Some of the contaminated equipment and radioactive metal is there. So there's huge, insane radiation out there today? Yes, that's right. There's a lot of radiation out there. Much more than any maximum permissible levels, even in the Chernobyl zone. It's best to stay away from that place and don't go there. Today, the ghost town of Pripyat is finally abandoned by humans and irrevocably lost. It is almost entirely covered by a green carpet of bushes and trees. After the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear plant on April 27, 1986, long convoys of buses, trucks, and two diesel trains drove to Pripyat. 
Residents hurriedly left the radioactive city, hoping for a quick return. Immediately after the evacuation, a long and difficult phase of decontamination of the city followed. Decontamination of the area was carried out by special police units and firefighters who used fire trucks to wash buildings and roads of radioactive dust. They cleaned up the contaminated soil and removed the radioactive stuff to special burial sites. But, despite the decontamination work that had been done, Pripyat never returned to full life. It was still very contaminated with radiation. After some time, Pripyat was mothballed, surrounded by barbed wire and checkpoints at the entrances. Today, the ghost town of Pripyat is finally abandoned. The brick and concrete buildings are collapsing in the wind and rain. In just 35 years, the ghost town of Pripyat has become an island of green with the silhouettes of high-rise buildings sticking out like rocks.